Because mathematical approaches to ERP source localization can be problematic, ERP researchers often use a much simpler difference wave approach to isolate ERP components. Let's start with a simple example. Here's the visual oddball paradigm from the ERP core. As you may recall, we presented a random sequence of A, B, C, D, and E. In a given trial block, one of these letters was designated the target, and the subjects would press one button for the target letter and another button for any of the non-target letters. In this example, B was the target. They'd press one button for B and another button for A, C, D, or E. The target category was 20% probable, and the non-target category was 80% probable. The target is an oddball, and the non-targets were standards. As in thousands of prior experiments, the rare target elicited a much larger P3 than the frequent standards. Now, there are many different ERP components that sum together in these waveforms. Some of them are bigger for oddballs, and some of them are the same for standards and oddballs. They're all mixed together in our scalp electrodes. How can we isolate the probability-sensitive P3 from all these other components? The answer is to make a target minus standard difference wave. We literally just take the target voltage at a given time point and subtract the standard voltage. This gives us just the probability-sensitive activity, which will mainly be the P3 wave. If there are other probability-sensitive components, they'll also be present in the difference wave, so this isn't a perfect approach to isolating an ERP component, but it works well enough in many cases. Okay, let's look at the underlying logic. Imagine that we have a scalp ERP with a P1 wave, a P2 wave, and a P3 wave. And imagine that we knew the source waveforms for the underlying components, which we'll call C1, C2, and C3. The scalp waveform is just the weighted sum of these source waveforms. For simplicity, I'm just using a weight of 1.0 for each component. Now imagine that we run an oddball experiment, and the magnitude of component C3 is 50% larger for the targets than for the standards. We just increase C3 by 50% and make a new weighted sum to get the scalp waveform for the targets. If we then take the difference between the targets and the standards at each time point, we can recover the component that changed. See how the difference wave has the same shape as component C3? The difference wave only extracts the change in the underlying component, but usually we're interested in a difference between conditions or a difference between groups, so that's okay. We usually have way more than three underlying components, and more than one of them might change between conditions. And we don't usually know what the underlying source waveforms are. However, the general principle is still the same. By making a difference waveform, we can isolate the components that differ between the parent waveforms. And if we have a subtle experimental manipulation, there's a good chance that only one component will differ between the conditions.